This is the first video for section 1.4 on Hamiltonian circuits. In this lecture, we'll talk about the postal worker problem. So here's what the problem is. We've got a postal worker who needs to take several packages from the post office and deliver them to certain locations and then return to the post office. So as we think about the problem, we want to think about what do we need to do so that the postal worker can find the best route to deliver these packages. And we also want to think about whether these kinds of solutions we've already been talking about, Euler circuits, really apply to this kind of problem. Is an Euler circuit what we want here? We've got a graph that represents the five locations, the post office and the four delivery drop-off points. And we've got edges that connect all of these locations. There's no restriction on where we can go, so we can connect every pair of points with an edge. An Euler circuit would mean that we're walking up and down every single street, up and down and back and forth, and covering every street until we get back to our starting point. Is that what we want to do here? Well, not really. All we need to do is visit each vertex once, drop off our package, and then move on to the next vertex. So an Euler circuit is not what we're looking for. So what is it that we need to do? We've got to visit each vertex once and then return to our starting point. And that's not an Euler circuit, that's something else. That's what's called a Hamiltonian circuit. A Hamiltonian circuit is a circuit that visits each vertex exactly once, except for the starting vertex, which is the same as the ending vertex. So in this case, our post office, that's our starting point. So we are going to visit that vertex twice, once at the beginning when we start our journey, and once at the end when we return back to the post office. So one example of a Hamiltonian circuit here would be to go from P to A, from A to C, from C to D, from D to B, and then from B back to the post office. So notice that there's many edges that we didn't walk along, but we visited every vertex exactly once, except for the first vertex, which we visited twice, once at the beginning and once at the end. So the graph that we're talking about here is called a complete graph because every pair of vertices is connected by an edge. Every two points has an edge that connects them. Now, that's different from some of the graphs that we saw before. So not every graph is going to be a complete graph, but in these Hamiltonian circuit problems, usually we're going to be talking about complete graphs. And the completeness of the graph represents the idea that we can go from any location to any other location. So what we're looking for is a way to do this where we're going to minimize the total distance traveled. That's going to be the goal. There's lots and lots of Hamiltonian circuits. There's lots of ways to start at P and maybe I could go to D, then over to C, and then up to A, and then over to B, and then back to P. That's a different example than the one that we saw before. So how do we know which one we want? We want to try to find the best circuit. So the meaning of that word best can change, right? Because we've got all these different Hamiltonian circuits, we want to find the one that has the lowest total cost where that word cost doesn't necessarily mean dollars. It doesn't necessarily mean monetary cost. It can mean minimizing the total travel time, minimizing the total distance, or it might mean dollars. We might want to be actually minimizing the total monetary cost. So in the next lecture, we're gonna to learn to how to actually do this. So the way to find the best Hamiltonian circuit is going to be to use what we call the brute force method. And in a brute force method, and, and there are brute force methods for lots of different kinds of problems, but a brute force method in general means that we look at every single possible solution to our problem, and then we choose which one of those is the best. And, and that method has advantages and disadvantages, as we're going to see. So we'll see you in that next lecture.